Welcome to the Bucket Plan On Demand, a podcast for financial advisors based on the best-selling book and process that simplifies financial planning. Hear from skilled industry professionals and special guests each episode that will help perfect your approach with clients and your results. Good morning, C2P, and thank you for joining us this morning from the West Coast to the East Coast. While we're going through talking about Life Insurance Awareness Month, if you've got questions, raise your hand, pop it in chat. We want to make sure we don't leave any question unanswered. I am Kirsten Schlombaum as the head of annuity sales and vice president. I am excited. I always get excited when I get the opportunity to have a fireside chat with Stoyan Pedef, our senior vice president of advanced market sales. Welcome, Stoyan. It's great to be here. I'm super excited because Life Insurance Awareness Month has been around for over 20 years. And I was just reading a study that said in 2023, about 40% of people were looking to purchase life insurance. Whether they did or they didn't, we don't have the follow-up results. But I think it's a timely conversation to talk about life insurance and implementing it into your bucket plan. So since National Life Insurance Awareness Month is coming up in September, Soyan, to start our conversation, what does this mean to you personally? So I would probably answer that question in two separate silos. If I put my advisor hat on, first and foremost, it's an important reminder that I need to review adequacy of my client's life insurance coverages. We do that already at our annual reviews. We review the account balances, the performance of the accounts, the income gap, the tax liability, the life changes for each and each one of our clients. But we also need to look at life insurance. And that's uh, Life Insurance Awareness Month is, is a great reminder to do that at our annual reviews. Uh, second, if I put my advisor hat on, uh, we need to do a better job of educating clients on the valuable benefits life insurance possesses. More than half, as you mentioned, of the U.S. adults admit lack of understanding about life insurance. And 76% of the people overestimate the cost of life insurance coverage. And what's more than that, they don't understand the tax benefits of a life insurance policy. They don't understand that death benefit comes out income tax-free. They don't understand that the cash value grows uh, tax deferred. And they don't understand that uh, income comes out income tax uh, comes out tax free. When I also look at from a from an advisor standpoint, I talk to people about the fact that you don't have to die to collect the benefit. The tax code allows us this wonderful opportunity to claim tax free living benefits when used for extended care events such as nursing home expenses, assisted living expenses, and home health care expenses. Another important aspect that I need to talk to my clients about when I, every chance and opportunity I get, and this is a wonderful reminder of that, is that life insurance offers creditor protection. And those that creditor protection varies from state to state, depending on your client's location, depending on where the majority of your business is. It is, it is important to acquaint yourself with those rules. And if, uh, if you need help, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you with, uh, with some of that language. But I also have to remind my clients that there's no right or wrong type of life insurance policy, period. It doesn't matter if it's a term. It doesn't matter if it's cash value. The important part is that you need to have one. It's as Dave Buckle says, it's your love policy. I also think of life insurance from a marketer standpoint. And Kirsten, you and I have are in those shoes on our daily conversations with advisors. But I continue to be amazed how many holistic, in air quotes, advisors are afraid to bring up that conversation. They avoid the discussion about life insurance. They're afraid of it. But all you have to do is when you review those plans, anytime the anytime the death is a liability on the client's balance sheet, life insurance is a solution. There is a need for life insurance. And regardless of whether it's personal, when it has to do with family, estate, taxes, special needs, or any other personal situation, or business setting, whether it's insuring against a key man loss, 
whether it's going to be talking about buy-sell agreements and funding those, whether it's going to be talking about deferred compensation and golden handcuffs. It doesn't have to be uncomfortable discussion. Um, you are already asking those questions as part of the bucket plan process. You just have to bring our team to coach you uh, on the appropriate amount. Um, Life Insurance Awareness Month is another opportunity for us to educate ourselves as well as advisors on the newest as well as the uh, old time-tested tools and approaches for the various uses of properly structured life insurance policy. Um, the versatility of life insurance of, of permanent policies continues to improve with uh, the loan provisions and uh, some of the living benefit riders, some of the lapse protection provisions, some of the stretch death benefit provisions. But by now, all carriers have updated their two discount rates for calculating maximum premiums on CVAT and guideline premium tests. Uh, you can use those to your advantage, especially when you talk about a sequence of returns risk and alleviating that. It's life insurance is one of the only tools that you possess in your repertoire uh, to address the sunset of the tax rates at the end of next year. These client discussions have to happen now because it's going to get pretty busy next year with all with all the attorneys that I'm talking to having been booked and reserved for discussions with potential clients next year. And I also use the Life Insurance Awareness Month as an opportunity. If I were you as an opportunity, I'd use it for to review recent legislative changes, proposed tax regimes, because government always creates an opportunity for us. And for those of you that have been on the call with uh, Ed Slot and Dave Allison yesterday, it is it is tremendous. Every time they, there's a change, that creates an opportunity for us as advisors. I can talk forever about life insurance, so please, by, by all means. I, I always appreciate listening to you, Soyan, because you bring a depth of knowledge that is wonderful. I'm going to get a little personal for myself right now. Why is Life Insurance Awareness Month important to me? My husband lost his dad at age five. His mother was left with a child who was going to be born in four weeks. No life insurance, no plan. Life insurance has been around for a really long time. And personally, I get frustrated seeing these GoFundMe pages on social media because people don't have life insurance. So Stoyan, as we talk about the planning process, I know that we're not always working with the GoFundMe crowd, but we can give opportunities to help all people get life insurance needs met. Why is life insurance essential to the bucket plan process? The way I look at it is it puts a wrapper, a protective wrapper all over all of the buckets that we talk to clients about. It makes sure that income in retirement is sufficient. It makes sure that dreams are realized. It makes sure that lifestyles are maintained, the debt, debts are paid off. And the biggest use of it is it turns forever tax money into never tax money. I got a call from one advisor recently about looking into maximize their client's pension benefit. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of some examples as to why it is important to look at it from a bucket plan perspective. And I'm sure that a lot of you have clients that deal with pension benefits at work. And when they retire, they have a decision to make. Do I take the single lifetime payout, kind of a SPIA, or do I protect also my spouse, my, my loved one? And it's one of those decisions that you have to really think through because it's important. And once you make it, it's irrevocable. And so I had a, an opportunity and, and the honor to work on one of those cases, and it's coming to fruition. Um, we're going to see the application uh, this week. But we were able to put together a life insurance policy that actually was had a lower premium than the difference between the single lifetime option and the joint lifetime option. And and so the client was in a better spot because now, can, now they can take the higher single lifetime payout. And while they're both living, they can have the higher tax exemptions that to claim annually. And they replace that benefit to their spouse if they die early with an income tax-free death benefit. Another example that that comes to mind is, and this is actually the second one this month, has been presenting solutions for 
uh, post Secure Act, the the loss of the stretch provision, and how those the loss of that stretch provision affects the claiming strategies, and how you can use life insurance to address that. In this particular case, the client had about 15 million estate. They were in a very high income tax rate state. Uh, they had about a nine, nine and a half million dollar IRA. Both the client and the spouse were in their early 60s. So through the use of one, one of my tools, we're able to show that taking just a small portion of that IRA, by all means, the IRA kept, go- kept growing, but by taking a small portion, a small distribution from that IRA, uh, they were able to purchase uh, a survivorship life insurance policy and address the estate tax issue that they're going to have 15, 20 years from now. I can get go through another through many other examples, but another one that probably comes to very close to mind for a lot of people is talk about the go years, the slow go years, and the no go years. And oftentimes we meet with clients that don't have uh, enough income to to last through their retirement. And oftentimes we have to make a decision whether we take a distribution, a larger distribution up front and maybe cover those go years and then maybe address the slow go and no go later. And life insurance actually is a great tool for that. If you decide to take a, a larger dist- distribution up front in the, during the go years to fund for that lifestyle, Maybe use a life insurance policy, a cheap life insurance policy to replace some of the lost benefits that, uh, benefit down the road. But another policy that came to us a couple of weeks ago on the application, worked with the advisor on structuring a survivorship uh, life insurance policy, and they wanted to address a couple of things with that. They wanted to, to leave about a million dollars to their family, and they also wanted to cover some of the long-term care benefits that they, would, they might face in retirement. So you could structure a $2 million life insurance policy with a uh, million dollar uh, guaranteed to be left over to the kids and have half a million dollar of long-term care benefit pool uh, for each of their needs. So if they don't need the long-term care, that half a million just gets added to the death benefit. So there are so many different ways that you can that you can address some of those needs. Going back to your question about the bucket plan, it, I like to say that life insurance also ensures your bucket plan against any Congress intervention. We know that Congress changes tax laws often and sometimes very quickly. And life insurance is one of those tools that you can have, and you can call it even Congress insurance if you like. I think when I think of the life insurance within a bucket plan context, I think about all the things. I think about the sequence of returns risk. I think about the extended care risk. I think about the survivor income, as I gave you an example earlier. I think about the legacy or the love insurance, as Dave Buckhold likes to say. That's more to into your later bucket. You can structure charitable bequests using life insurance for pennies on the dollar. You can pay for state taxes, but we do talk about a lot of those strategies and risks in our tax management journey and throughout our bucket plan training modules. So let me ask this question, Stoyan. At what or in what part of the bucket plan planning process should we re- bring up life insurance? And what questions should we be asking? I know it's on the priorities and concerns worksheet. But sometimes having that conversation feels difficult. How can you help our advisors broach the subject? The way I look at it, you have two opportunities to bring life insurance throughout the bucket plan planning process. And one of them is your delivery meeting. And the second one, the second opportunity that you're going to get, and you're going to get that opportunity every single year that you do the review, is during the plan review meeting that you have with your client on a regular basis. The reason why you have to wait until the delivery meeting is because when you, you cannot talk about life insurance before you have gained their trust. You have to listen to what they say during your discovery meetings, what they put on their concerns and priorities sheet, what they list on their asset sheets as, as far as assets, what type of policies they own. That will get you a glimpse of how they've gone through the years 
of structuring their assets and liabilities and protection. Then try to quantify what they lose if they don't have it and show them that number. And it, when you show them that number and you say, this is, this is how we can address some of those shortages on your, in your plan for very small cost, that's what makes a difference. That's awesome. And Tim Haas, I saw your hand was raised. Did you have a question for Stoyan? Survivorship life, in, uh, particularly, I understand the a larger estate, but sometimes there may be, like in Connecticut, it depends on what the estate tax laws are. But, but is there a way or a tools that you use or we could use work together to evaluate the purpose for survivorship life, particularly with the estate tax transfer? Absolutely. Yeah. The one of the latest ones that I worked on, actually, it was earlier this week, and some of you may be in the call that I talked to, but it, it basically does an estate tax projection. And when you do an estate tax projection using what the client owns, what the client has, and you re use reasonable assumption, you can actually purchase life insurance. The, the insurance companies will allow you to do a reasonable projection of their estate, and you can purchase a life insurance policy today to cover that liability in the future. So yeah, by all means, we can do that. And we'd be happy to work with you on how to structure that. Perfect. Yeah, thanks. And a reminder, if you have a question, raise your hand and mute yourself. We want to hear from you. We want to make sure that you're getting what you need out of this coffee break. And I'm going to go back a little bit, Stoyan. And I know it's not our grandma's life insurance, that life insurance annuities. It's all evolving. Things are changing. A new products are coming out. What would you say, and this is not a product plug, but what are, are you most impressed with the evolution of life insurance that you've seen over the last few years? Absolutely. That's I'm a geek by nature. <laughs> yeah. So I love talking about features because and that's one of the things that I look for in a life insurance contract when I read it and I look at the product. But several things have changed over the last few years that I'm really excited about. One ingenious aspect of the life insurance policy that has evolved over the last few years is the reversionary annuity aspect of it. And I'll elaborate on that. A lot of people don't want to provide a lump sum death benefit to their spouse or their kids. Insurance companies have come up with a solution where instead of paying a lump sum death benefit, what you can do is you can customize the payment per beneficiary. And it's a lot of people call this a poor man's trust. And for example, if I have uh, Johnny who doesn't do well with money, what I can do is instead of paying him a lump sum amount of money, I can structure a monthly benefit of uh, $1,000 a month uh, for the next 30 years. If I have a daughter who's going to get married, I can structure a lump sum payment of twenty-five dollars or $40,000, maybe your amount, to pay for the wedding and then have a smaller a monthly paycheck go out to her. So there are so many different ways you can customize that, but you can do it per beneficiary and it doesn't have to be in a trust. Another uh, wonderful aspect of the evolution of life insurance over the last few years is, is the use of the death benefit to fund for long-term care benefits or extended care benefits. There are a myriad of combinations there. There are so many different riders. There are so many different ways to structure those policies the flexibility is there. And we can talk about that on a one-on-one -on -one basis, depending on the case that you have. It's another fun one that I really like to talk about. And I have actually gotten two questions about it the last month alone is life insurance and qualified plans. Yes, you can own a life insurance policy inside a qualified plan. You can use qualified plan dollars to buy life insurance policy. There, there have to be some tests that have to be met to do that. But yes, that is that that is there. And if you look at life insurance and the evolution of life insurance, it is constantly evolving. And some of the more recent things that have changed involve the lapse protection provisions that are put into place in some of the life insurance policies. So that if you use the life insurance policy to address some of that sequence of returns risk that we talk about, those provisions make sure that the policy doesn't lapse if the cash value gets low enough and it, and it threatens the, the feasibility of that life insurance policy. There are so many different things that we can talk about. And of course, just, just reach out to us, reach out to our team, 
would be happy to go over any and all of those, depending on the client situation. It sounds like we have so many opportunities to help our clients with their life insurance needs. It's not just a, we're going to put a square peg in a square hole and that's all we have. So why are our advisors hesitant to have this conversation when there's so many solutions to meet almost every need? In the way, it, and I've talked to hundreds of advisors over the years and it usually comes down to a very few reasons that they put forward. One of one of the biggest ones that, that has come to the surface has been that a decline on a life insurance application can sour a relationship. And and yeah, that, that may be a valid concern, but that's why we have the tools that we do to actually do pre-qualification of that particular uh, client before they apply and get, and get a decline or a rated policy. The process has become very easy very comfortable to all parties involved. It get, gets digitized pretty much on a monthly basis. I see a company that that puts additional digital features available on their throughout their application process. Another big reason that I see people just stay away from it is because they don't understand how it works. I'm amazed that advisors still don't, they're not in our particular setting because we work with, with holistic advisors that have insurance licenses, but especially when you talk to some of the people in the wirehouse setting, they still don't understand how life insurance works and that's why they're not comfortable with it. Uh, but if you call yourself a holistic advisor, you already talk about uh, life expectancy with your clients. That conversation comes up because it has to be incorporated in the plan itself when you put it together. And it has to do with, with how long their income needs are going to last. And that's a conversation that you need to have to begin with. So you already inquire a little about their longevity, about their family history. And so it's a natural progression to open up a conversation to ensure that if that life expectancy comes to pass, it's uh, you're protected against any shortcomings in your asset base. But yeah, those are probably the biggest reasons. I don't, and I don't understand why people don't talk about it, especially at annual reviews, because it's you're basically outsourcing the review to somebody like like C2P, and you're calling us and you're saying this is what the client has, um, this is how the policy has performed. We'll coach you through every single step of the process, and it doesn't have to be uncomfortable, it doesn't have to be hard, and it's an excellent revenue diversifier for you because you already work with annuities, you already work with AUM. So why not just branch into another aspect and and have that three-legged stool that you can base your practice on? Speaking of the advisor's confidence, Lisa Janae did ask a question that do we have any e-learning modules to help understand the different life insurance or are you and our life sales team our best resource? We're talking about putting some of those modules together and putting them up on, on our e-learning website. That will be coming. We can do the coaching one-on-one. That's always an option. If you have a client that you're working with, if you have a situation that you're working through, just give us a call and we'd be happy to help. But yeah, those modules will be forthcoming. We'll try brief snippets about the different types of life insurance and, and what it can be used for. As always, 30 minutes is just not enough to listen to Stoyan talk about life insurance and positioning and what's working. So if you look in the chat, September 9th, because it's Life Insurance Awareness Month, we are hosting a webinar or live meeting from 11 a.m. to 11.45 Eastern Standard Time. Stoyan is going to go into more details on why your approach is not working and give you tips. And for those that register and show up, you're going to receive exclusive marketing opportunities to get in front of your clients. So please join us, register. And next week, we have Dave Allison talking about investor psychology with Mark Peterson with BlackRock. So we look forward to having you here next week. Thank you for being here today. And if you need anything on life insurance, please reach out to Stoyan and the Life Sales team at lifesales at c2penterprises.com. 
and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to the Bucket Plan On Demand, brought to you by C2P, an organization whose purpose is to educate, train, grow, and support holistic financial advisors so families can achieve true prosperity. Subscribe today for the latest episodes and insights. Visit c2penterprises.com to learn how we can help support and enhance your advisory business. At the time of delivery and any subsequent publishing, information was deemed reliable but is subject to change by the time of listening or viewing. The contents of this piece include options and projections of C2P, are subject to change, and are for informational purposes only. The information provided in this presentation is not intended to be individual investment, tax, or legal advice.